hey everyone welcome again in this video we are going to learn service discovery what it is and what kind of problems does it solve let's get started consider this use case where we have a microservice running on a host so this is our microservice and it is running on this host and this microservice has some metadata like ip port health and name then on the right hand side we have a client and this client wants to send a request to this microservice to do that it can use the ip and the port information to send an http request and because we have a single instance running on the host it's all good now let's make this use case a bit more complicated let's say we have to scale the service now by scaling we mean we need to add more instances of this service so what we did we added another instance here and if we can run the new instance on the same host then notice we cannot use the same port because it's already being used and if we started the new instance on a different host then depending on the availability of that port on that host we may or may not be able to use that port so you see we have started facing some problems as soon as we go from a single instance to multiple instances the second problem is if we cannot use the same port for multiple instances of the service for whatever reasons and if we have to assign a random port to a new instance of the same service then how does the client know that it needs to use a particular port to call that instance for example Another problem with this setup is how do we keep this information? Where do we keep this information? That this microservice is running on these hosts and potentially with different IP and ports. How do we maintain the health information that instance 1 is up and running while instance 2 is down or whatever it is? We may think to use a configuration file where we can keep this metadata like a key value pair. So let's say for instance 1, we have this metadata and for instance 2, we have another set of metadata like this. But the problem is with this setup, new instances can be added anytime. So in this setup, let's say what if we added one more instance here, then we have to update this configuration file. And what if we add another one? In that case also, we need to update the same configuration file. Now consider the case where this instance crashed. And because it crashed, we need to remove this instance from the cluster. And simultaneously, we need to update the same configuration file. Now we need to remove the entry from the configuration file. And let's say if we added a new instance as a replacement, then we need to add its information in the same configuration file. So you see there is an overhead of maintaining this configuration every time there is a change in the cluster. And clusters nowadays are very dynamic. In the cloud native world where we have the automated scaling depending on the cloud provider and the configured rules the environment can add instances can scale up the application automatically and it can also scale down when there is no demand so this has to be fluid this has to be maintainable thing which is not possible if we keep the configuration like this and when we have more than one instances of the same application running how does the client decide where to redirect its request now if we consider the same client here how does it know if it is making a request which ip to use which port to use should it call this instance or this one or this one this is a very common problem in the microservices architecture or in any distributed architecture and that's where the concept of service discovery comes into the picture a service discovery acts as a dictionary you can say or as a directory which keeps the information of all the services and their instances so it knows how many services are running how many instances are running are these services up and running which is basically the health information of all these instances what are the ip addresses which instance is running on which port so all this information moving on let's see how this service discovery simplifies this whole problem here we have the same setup where we have multiple instances of the same application which are denoted by these blocks in different colors and in the middle we have the service discovery component and on the right hand side we have the client two things that we need to understand with discovery service the first one is the registry part and the second one is the discovery in the register step the instance will register itself with the discovery service so when we start an application when we start a new instance of the application the first thing it will do it will register itself with the discovery service and in this step it will send some metadata to the discovery service like its ip port application name health endpoint where the discovery service can ping and find the health information to determine if the service is up and running 
and so all the instances will register themselves with the discovery service with the help of register step the discovery service knows a lot more about the cluster it knows how many instances are running where these instances are running what are the ips and ports so it acts like a directory it's a directory of all the microservices so let's say if we add one more instance in the cluster of the same service the first thing it will do it will register itself with the discovery service it will send some metadata to the discovery service and now discovery service knows that for this microservice a there are four instances running which are these four apart from the initial metadata that was sent in the registration phase all the instances sent periodic heartbeats to the discovery service and the time is configurable so let's say in every 30 seconds all these instances will send a heartbeat to the discovery service with the help of the heartbeats discovery service determines which instances are up and running so for example if the discovery service didn't get the heartbeat from a particular instance within the configured amount of time then it can determine that this particular instance is not healthy maybe it's not up and running maybe it's crashed and accordingly it can remove the information of that failed instance from the cluster so for example let's say this particular node crashed and because it crashed it will not send the next heartbeat to the discovery service now when the discovery service will notice that it did not receive the heartbeat from this particular node within let's say 30 seconds it can decide to remove this node from the cluster and so this node will be removed from the cluster and now the updated information is that this particular microservice has three instances and that is done automatically by the discovery service so we don't need to keep any other configuration any other mapping and we don't need to update it manually and similarly let's say if we added one more instance then it will register itself and the count will again increase to four and that's how discovery service solves the problem of maintaining the metadata maintaining the mappings of different instances of the same service the second part of the problem is discovery which is easier to understand because discovery service has this metadata it has this mapping same as a directory anyone can query the discovery service to find the information of microservice a so from a client perspective instead of maintaining the overhead of mapping on the client's end the client can work with the discovery service and the discovery service can help the client to redirect the request to a healthy node or to a healthy instance now that we understand the concept of service discovery and what is the role of discovery service let's talk about some of the available options or solutions that we can use to implement a discovery service number one that we can use is netflix eureka the second thing is console and the third one is zookeeper these are the popular solutions that people use to implement the discovery service in their architecture in the next video we will see how to use netflix eureka to implement a discovery service as for this video we have covered the basics of discovery service i hope you understand the problem statement and the role of discovery service see you in the next video thanks for watching